Pokemon Ultimate Adventures by Mike Azuki. Ketcha may not be very strong, but Skyrender sees great potential in him. That's why he doesn't want to eliminate him. He's daring Ketchum to get stronger, and that sort of challenge makes him indirectly promise that he'll put up a better fight in the future. Twindreamer crossed his arms. Skyrender has great respect for the kid. Maybe Sky respects you enough not to finish you off right now, but I don't! I say we crush the kid! G.I. Joe cracked his knuckles and approached Ash. <laughs> he exclaimed when Pikachu sprung up and skull bashed him on the face, causing him to stumble backward a few steps. Huh? Pikachu? Ash looked at his Pokemon. Pika Pikachu! said Pikachu. No, I didn't exactly forget about you. Well, yeah, I did. Ash looked down. Huh. <laughs> the mouse packs quite a punch there, doesn't he? G.I. Jolt rubbed his cheek. Although not enough! <laughs> Ash and Pikachu screamed as G.I. Jolt swung his massive arm, sending them flying. But he wasn't done yet. <laughs> In each hand, Jolt grabbed Pikachu and Ash by the neck. Unfortunately for you, you won't even live to see Sky again, because I'm gonna crush you both right here! He shouted, tightening his grip. Good thing I wear gloves, because this is gonna be really messy! Oh no you don't! Double Edge! A voice called. <laughs> Starmie flew and slammed the back of Jolt's head. <laughs> G.I. Jolt dropped Ash and Pikachu. Starmie! Hydro Pump! Mega Punch, Geodude! Bind him, Onyx! Fury swipe, Scyther! What? Scyther? Ash exclaimed as the five Pokemon dashed at Jolt. No you don't! Hyah! Armageddon Fist! G.I. Jolt swung his fist at the attackers. Electricity gathered around his fist, and it sounded like thunder had crashed as the explosive power in his fist shattered Starmie's jewel, Scyther's right blade, and sent Onyx and Geodude to pieces. If Scyther's here, that means that... Tracy! Cavalry has arrived! Tracy gave him a thumbs up. This is even better than a party! Anti-Arctic jumped from the trees. It's our turn to fight! Twin Dreamer grinned. Finally! I was getting bored! Goth got up and raised the scythe. You think so? Ash smiled. If Tracy's here, then that means the rest of the backup! It's been so long since I've said this! Solar Beam! Hydro Pump! Fire Spin! Sky Attack! From the air, Charizard opened his mouth and blasted the fire. Squirtle withdrew into his shell and spun through the air, firing water. From the bulb of his back, Bulbasaur fired a powerful beam. At high speed, Pidgeot swooped from the air and slammed into Twin Dreamer, knocking him out of the air. However, even this powerful round of attacks wasn't enough to bring down the fiends. All of them just got right back up, and through the woods, into the scene stepped Bonsai and Cleft, joining the others. Hmm! <laughs> Ash stood there, his friends by his side, and his Pokémon in front of him. Though he was bleeding and wounded heavily, that look of intensity still hadn't faded from his eyes as he slowly managed to take a fighting stance one last time. Heh. <laughs> so this is what he meant. The fiend stared back at Ash and his team. The intensity, the passion, the power. There was no telling what Ash was capable of. As much as we'd like to see what you're really capable of, I think we'll follow Skyrender's example and save it for another day, they said, disappearing into the woods. Remember, Ketchum, get stronger! and become a worthy adversary! <clears throat> Ash sighed and collapsed, exhausted. Ash! Misty ran forward to see if he was okay. He's fine, just really exhausted, said Ebby. I'd be like that, more likely even worse if I was the one fighting the legendary Skyrender. Sky what? asked Brock. Skyrender, the leader and the most powerful of the Super Fiends said Ebby. He uses no Pokemon because he has no need for them. His skills are unsurpassed, and with the Skyfall sword he wields, he is said to be unbeatable in combat. That's putting it lightly, sighed Ash. 
Who were those guys you were fighting? Tracy asked. I'll explain later, Ash sighed. I'm tired. Ash, Misty, Brock, Tracy, and Ebby started making their way back to Tealville. Wait, now that Tracy and the backup's here, I'm sure you're ready to take on the Team Rocket base, said Brock. That was the plan in the first place. Ebby smiled. And that's not the only good news we have. I've got the latest news. The Missingno gang will be no more in a matter of days. After you beat Doppelganger, he was the only reason the Fiends had any connections to that band of weaklings. Without any tough Fiends to help them in the fighting, those guys, what were their names? Jesse and James, are leading a bunch of other Team Rocket grunts back to Scarlet City and are gonna crush the Missingno gang. Giovanni's really serious about something, and he's trying to eliminate other criminal organizations as we speak. He's already taken out 28 gangs and criminal rings. After beating the bosses and leaders, because Team Rocket promises more than any other gang, it was easy to recruit more guys. He seems to be building an army for something. You've beaten 001, 003, and 004, and done a ton of damage to the organization, but I doubt that even you're a big enough problem to need to build an entire army. And last, but certainly not least, trainers taking the Dark Forest detour away from Team Rocket Base have claimed to be attacked by strange, not to mention horrible creatures, assumed to be Pokemon, but all unidentifiable and extremely powerful, as well as aggressive. I wonder what that's all about. Ash sighed. He'd like to get Team Rocket out of the way, and also the Missingno gang. For then, he could concentrate 100% on getting strong enough for Skyrender. And then there were those creatures. Which one should he go for? Can we continue this some other time? I need sleep. Well, remember, the choice is yours. You can either head back to Scarlet City and finish off the Missingno gang for good, or you could infiltrate Team Rocket's base and see what they're up to. Or investigate the Dark Forest Beasts, said Ebby. Oh, and by the way, because you're getting stronger opponents, you're gonna need to carry more than six Pokémon at a time. How am I supposed to do that? asked Ash. The Pokéball limit is controlled by your Pokédex, and the strong program keeps people from cheating by using more than six, said Ebby, and pulled out a small cartridge. But I've discovered a bit of technology so advanced that it can override the code of any tech in the world! Put it in your Pokédex, and you can ignore the six Pokémon limit! Sweet! Ash put it in the Pokédex. How did you make something like this? I really shouldn't take the credit for something so wondrous, because I didn't make it. I bought it from somewhere, said Ebby. Where? everyone asked. Well... Keep it a secret, because it's better this news doesn't get out. I bought this thing at Walmart. It's a Game Shark, Ebby said proudly. Everybody sweat dropped. Even though it was a losing battle against a Super Fiend, Ash couldn't help but respect Skyrender. Will Ash ever become strong enough to defeat him? And in other news, where should they go now? Should they head to Scarlet City and break up the Messingo gang? Should they break into Team Rocket HQ? Or should they investigate the monster claims in Dark Forest? Choose a scenario, Koopo!